encourage ourselves to worship and to press in. There is a lion. It's the lion of Judah that's inside. We need to worship with everything that we are. Come on, my soul. Come on, my soul. Come on, my soul.
as we pray for them this morning. So God, we just lift up Eastwood Community Church to you today. God, we thank you for their mission and the vision that you have given them as they are planted here in Wilmington, Lord. And we ask that no plan of the enemy would prosper against them, God, but you would cover them under the shadow of your wing, God. And we pray that even right now, as we are praying for them, that there would be miracles taking place in their house, that salvations would be taking place, God. And we just thank you, Lord, for who they are and what they stand for in our city. In Jesus' name, amen. We also wanna take a moment to pray over our tithes and our offerings and to thank you for the generosity that you pour out each and every week to build what God is building in Life Church. And so, God, we just thank you for these tithes and our, on our offerings, God. We thank you, Lord, that you can do more with what we can bring you than we could ever do in our own strength and in our own hands, Lord. And so right now we ask that you would do just that, that you would produce a harvest that is greater than we could ask for or imagine with these tithes and the, these offerings, God, and that you would reward each and every person um, for their gift that they are giving, Lord. And so we just thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, church, it has been so amazing worshiping with you this morning. Why don't you go ahead and grab a seat and turn your attention to the screens. Hey, Life Church. I hope you're having a great morning so far. My name is Lachlan and I'm our youth director here on Star. If today is your first time with us, we would love for you to take a minute to fill out the Connect card that is on the seat back in front of you to let us know that you are here today. You can drop off that Connect card at the Welcome Home Center after service and pick up a free t-shirt as well as a thank you for being at church this morning. Also on the back of that Connect card, you can let us know how we can be praying or celebrating with you this week. We would love to invite you to join us at our upcoming Next Steps class. This three-week course is for anyone looking to learn more about who we are as a church and how you can best get plugged in and make a difference. Lunch and childcare are provided for. We just ask that you sign up online or on our church app ahead of time. For all information about our upcoming events or all of our ministries, you can download our Life Church app or visit our website at lifechurchwilm.com. Again, we are so glad that you're here today at Life Church. Welcome home. Good morning, church. How are you today? Y'all doing good? Y'all doing great? And awesome. Well, hey, thank you for being here. My name is Eli Blevins. I'm on staff here at Life Church. And I just want to say welcome to a beautiful Wilmington spring morning. I am loving this sunshine, warm weather out here and the pollen all at the same time. It's been great. So, um, hey, I have one announcement for you guys. And um, on your way in, you probably got one of these cards here. I mean, it's talking about our Holy Week, the Easter week that we have coming up. And so I just wanna draw your attention to this, that on Friday, March 29th, at three o'clock on that Friday, we're gonna be having a special Good Friday service. And we would love for you to come and partake in this. We'd love for you to bring your friends or family to this, and it's gonna be great. It's gonna be a time of reflection and remembrance of Jesus. And then Sunday, for Easter Sunday, we're gonna celebrate Jesus and celebrate the resurrection of Jesus for that day. And it's gonna be incredible. So we'd love for you guys to come to that. And so there's gonna be just, I don't know, there's someone in your life someone in your life that probably needs Jesus and they need to hear the gospel. And we want you to bring them that Sunday. And it's gonna be amazing to hear the stories of people's lives being changed because you brought someone to church with you for one of those events. So we would love for you to come for that. Love for you to bring your friends and family. It's gonna be fantastic. Um, church, we're getting ready to, we're entering into our Easter series. And so it's gonna be great. I have two pages of notes I took for a service. So it's great, it's deep, it's amazing. And uh, we can't wait for you to hear it. church how are you today the video is enough of a message right there you can just end it but but I'm not I'm gonna I'm gonna talk for you though I got something for you um, listen every week we welcome our guests to church and I always invite our church body to to clap for people that are here and and I want you to know if you're a guest today we genuinely are excited you're here and we hope that by being here, you connect with Jesus, you 
worship Jesus and you walk out of here with Jesus in your heart. So the reason we clap for you is because we want to see God move in your life and we're glad you're here. So I'm going to invite our church now to clap like you mean it. Um, we're so glad you're here. <laughs> so good. Well, I know Eli gave you a quick uh, promotion about what's coming up and I'm just going to follow it up because I don't want you to miss the next couple of weeks around here at church. And um, next week we begin Holy Week and some of you may be unsure what Holy Week is all about. And so um, if you come next week, I'll, I'll tell you, how's that? Um, so you got to come back next week. I want to invite you back next week. You're going to love it. Um, it also is Palm Sunday. And you may be like, well, what's Palm Sunday? Well, if you come, I'll, I'll tell you what Palm Sunday is. And then um, after that Sunday, after Palm Sunday, that is Holy Week. And then on Friday, we have our Good Friday service. And I would love for you to be part of that and come and, and experience that. And you're like, well, what's a Good Friday service? And well, if you come, you'll find out. So that, how's that? And then it's Easter. And you probably have an idea what Easter is all about. But if you come, you're really going to worship and have a great time. And so I want to just encourage you to participate through this Easter season. We're Christians. We're followers of Jesus. And it's a significant time for us to draw close to God. And so participate come to all of it and be a part of all of it uh, second thing i want to do is to remind you of a message i preached two weeks ago and it was called whatever it takes uh, i'm just going to risk it all right here who remembers any part of whatever it takes raise your hand all right and if you don't remember go ahead and raise your hand lie for me because um, in a minute i'm going to talk about forgiveness and you'll be fine all right so <laughs> well if you don't remember whatever it takes is is we will do whatever it takes to get people to the Easter services, whatever it takes. And some of you are now going, oh, I do remember it. Because remember we talked about how the, the four friends dug a hole in the roof and they got their friend down to Jesus, and that's the, the recap. So do whatever it takes to get someone here. What does that look like, though? Uh, don't, like in theory, hope that somebody comes. Like, you know, like, oh, I hope somebody comes. Like, actually invite somebody to come. That's what whatever it takes means. I recommend that you think of three people today and you start praying for three people, like three like names, like three like legitimate, literal people that are in your life. Maybe you don't know their name, but it's maybe somebody that you see at the store and you go to that store once a week and you've built some sort of a rapport with somebody at you know Trader Joe's. And so you can just, and just pray for that person. Then go to Trader Joe's and invite them and say, hey, just like, like, Dallas, I love your name, by the way. I'm, I was born in Dallas, Texas, so you're special to me. Um, but by the way, if I were to walk up to Dallas and he was working at Trader Joe's, I'd be like, Dallas, guess what, man? Our church has special Easter services, and I'd like for you to be my guest. What do you say? Do it. See, it works. It works. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. It worked first service, too. So I'm telling you, that that's an easy invite. Um, so I want to encourage you to do whatever it takes to... Get people to Easter service because God wants to change lives on Easter. Third thing I'll remind you to do is to volunteer because we're adding a service. So three services on Easter, which means we have to add volunteers. And so I would love for you to tell Miss Nicole and Kids Ministry and tell Eli and all our serve team ministries, I'll be glad to serve one or two services so people can come and meet Jesus. Amen. All right, let me pray. Father, thanks for this day. Thank you for the week that's coming and, and even for what's here today. But God, I pray that through this Easter season that our hearts would draw close to you. We would experience you in fresh new ways. God, reveal to us more of who you are and how much you love us and, and what Easter means to us, Father. And God, I pray right now for our Easter services Lord, that there would be people that come that need to hear the message of hope through Jesus Christ. And Lord, that people's lives would be changed and we would see salvations on that day. And so we lift that up to you in the name of Jesus. Amen, church. Amen. Awesome. I want to talk to you today about why we celebrate Easter. I want to set the tone for the next couple of weeks. I want you to, listen, here's what I want. I, I want this to be the most meaningful Easter you've ever had. I want it to be my most meaningful Easter I've ever had. 
And in order to do that, we, we've got to kind of grasp what all Easter is about and why we celebrate Easter. And so I'm preaching about that today. I want to set all this up so you have an amazing Easter season. And I was digging around online trying to figure out why do, why do we call it Easter? Like, I mean, you know, like the most important, significant moment in history of humanity, why do we call it Easter? And I really couldn't find a clear answer. I'm like, well, that's kind of weird. But um, some think it goes all the way back to this ancient goddess uh, called Estore. Uh, I probably pronounced that completely wrong. But Estore, which was the goddess of spring. So I don't know. And sometime after that, I think some Christians thought, well, let's let's just steal their holiday and turn it into a Christian holiday. And And I'm all about just claiming things from culture and turn it into a God thing, and so I'm fine with that. Um, some people believe it came from a German goddess of fertility, and somehow they associate that with rabbits. So I don't know um, how that all works, um, but I'll just let that just be your imagination. And so, but I don't know. I don't know why we came up with Easter, and I really don't care about the name. Some people think it's just a great holiday, it's spring break, and it's so fun. Some people love the spring, they love all the Easter eggs, and and, and I'll be honest with you, I love all the Easter eggs too. Listen, I, we're going to, at our house, we're going to put out some Easter eggs, and, and you know, some people will be like, oh, that's like part of a pagan holiday. No, 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 it's Easter eggs, we're having fun, and and uh, but we're going to celebrate Jesus, that's the main thing. So for those of our Christians, listen to this, listen, Easter is a pivotal event that stands as the bedrock of our faith. That's Easter. It's a pivotal event. The death and the resurrection of Christ are our guarantee of redemption, of eternal life, and victory over sin and Satan. It's the culmination of God's plan for humanity, for our salvation. We find hope because of what happened on Easter. So Easter is remembering these most significant moments. And so let me summarize Easter for you. You can see on the screen what Easter is summarized. It means that Jesus died so we would not have to experience eternal death. And it means that he rose again so that we could experience eternal life. And so at Easter, we, we reflect on his death and we celebrate his resurrection. Those are the most significant things. So that's like a, a big picture view today. I'm going to invite you to go into a little deeper story with me. Today, I feel the, the, the move in my heart to, to, to dive, and, and I'm, going to, I'm going to ask you to, to open your hearts and go somewhere with me today. Ever since I wrote this message and I have been reflecting on it, I have been so moved that I, I almost couldn't wait to get to today to get this out because when it sits in me like this, I, I, at times I almost became weepy and weird, just not weird, just weepy, or just because the significance and the weight of how gracious Jesus is. And so we're going to go deep for a few minutes. You okay with that? It's good. It's too bad. <laughs> Easter, pivotal in our plan for salvation. So let me take you back before. Jesus and before the death and the resurrection of Christ, worshipers of God, they, they had to follow this set of, of laws. You probably understand and have heard of the Ten Commandments and they were given by God to Moses and then other religious leaders began to add to these laws to help clarify what all these laws meant. Over time, over 600 different rules and regulations developed as part of the law. And God gave these laws to humanity to teach us what he wanted from us in terms of holy living and how to worship him. So the law was beautiful in that it was this set of rules and standards that we can look at tangibly and go, this is God's heart for this. This is what God wants in this. And so in its beauty, it was teaching us what a holy living, holy life looks like. And though the standards were, were there, but along with these standards, God used a system of blessings and punishment when people obeyed the law or when people disobeyed the law or failed. So when God's people obeyed the law of God and they lived under that, the, the law of that, that covenant, then God blessed them abundantly. 
God provided for them. God protected them. And so they lived in this, this layer of, of protection of God because they sat under that law of, of, of God's way of, of living, this holy living. But the moment they broke the law, the moment they misstepped on one of those 600 and something rules and regulations, they went from the blessings into a, a system or a, a punishment from God. And so it was, a, it was a punishment. The punishment came so that the, the people that were living there understood that when they missed the mark, it was wrong. And so punishment came as a way of, of training the hearts of people to know what was right and what was wrong. The punishment would stick with them and it became a way to help push them and force them in a way back to serving God again because they didn't want to live under this punishment any longer. And so if you read through the Old Testament, you'll see that the Israelites, they lived in seasons of God's blessings and then they would disobey God and they would live, live under seasons of his punishment and they would get you know, exasperated. They'd finally turn back to God and they'd come back. And so the Old Testament is like that all the time and it's God's training ground for us to see what holiness looks like and how to worship God. The punishment, though, was severe, but God made a way for them to remove that sin when they broke the law and to stop that punishment. And so God created for them a system of forgiveness of their sins by sacrificing an animal. Now, that just sounds horrible. Like, I don't know, gruesome, I just yuck. Like what, what God would do that? And, and, and I pondered that and, and I'm like, Lord, why an animal? What, what are you trying to teach us if everything you do is perfect and holy? What is it about an animal? And, and, and I realized that all sin leads to a spiritual death, right? It's a separation from God. And there is life that's in blood. And so when we, we see in the scriptures where there was a sacrifice of an animal, an animal gave his life as a substitute punishment so that humanity could be forgiven in that moment. And so that system came to where these religious followers of God, as they would sin, they would take this animal to be sacrificed and and in a way it was an act of grace by God because he gave them a way to deal with the sin and to understand what sin looks like and how to deal with it and so it was almost like a, an act of grace for them and God would accept the death of an animal as their punishment rather than enforcing the punishment upon that person so an animal would pay the price for someone's sin so the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9, it says it like this. It says, in fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. And so that was what the law was. Without the shedding of blood, there was no forgiveness. Let me, let me just for a few minutes take you back to pre-Jesus days. Let's go back to Old Testament and put our put our feet in their sandals for just a moment. So in that culture, most people were ranchers and farmers and shepherds. And so they had access to, to animals. And so God created a system that was doable for them. And so what would happen is, is that when people would sin against God's law, they would take one of their animals to the temple to be sacrificed as the payment for their sin. Now, a baby lamb was considered the purest and the most innocent of all animals to be sacrificed. I want you to look at this picture for just a moment. Look at that. Now, in that culture, they had lambs. And the lamb was in a pen that would be right out Inside the house and as a family they would know the lamb can you imagine if you had children you know they played with the lamb I bet they named him oh fluffy <laughs> it's 
snowball. They probably didn't know snow there, but snowball. <laughs> Cute ears. Look at his little face. Look at his eyes. His eyes are looking at us with love. And like, you would never hurt me. And so every family, when they sinned, had to deal with sin. Imagine you're in the Old Testament and someone in the family breaks one of God's laws. So in, in that system, a father would represent his family and it was his responsibility to take the sacrifice. So if his wife sinned or if his kids sinned in some capacity, the husband's responsibility as the head of his house is he would take the sacrifice to the temple. So for a moment, imagine someone in your family or yourself sins and the father goes out to this pen and the kids are, are with him. And he picks up this, this little lamb and the kids go, hey, what you doing, dad? And he starts to walk towards the temple and the kids are trailing and they're like, Dad, why are you taking Fluffy? And the father would stop and he would turn with this lamb in his arms and he would talk to his children about the significance of sin. And he would teach his family that there's a, a high price to sin. And he would say, this is God's way of, of grace so that we don't live under a family curse or punishment. And sin is so weighty that God requires a, 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 an animal, a lamb, to be sacrificed. And as he's walking, the kids are crying now. And he gets to the temple and he presents this lamb to a priest. The priest will inspect the lamb because they can only present a perfect lamb for sacrifice, no blemishes, no, no injury can be on the lamb. It has to be the perfect lamb. The priest will inspect it, approve it, and then there's this little ceremony that takes place. And the father would place his hands on the little lamb's head, and he would say a prayer that said something like, Dear God, I ask that you would transfer my family's sin upon this lamb and you would accept that as a sacrifice on our behalf and then the father would take his hands off and back away and now that sin is now placed upon the lamb and the priest would then take it to be sacrificed on behalf the father would begin a walk home Feeling the weight of his sin. Feeling the, the freedom from it and knowing he's back under the, the blessings of God. But the weight of that sin and how significant it was. The lamb would take the place and he would take the judgment on behalf of that father and his family. The Bible says in Hebrews 10, 11, it says it like this. It says, day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties. Again and again, he offers the same sacrifices, which can never take away the sins. And so what was happening was, is people every day were missing the mark, the standard, the, the law. And it became part of the culture of the temple. There was continually having sacrifices for the sins of the people. And it was a, 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 a system that weighted down the people to the degree they felt hopeless under that system because they could never, ever get it right for long enough because they would take this lamb and it would be slaughtered, they would be free, but the next time they broke 
one of the laws, they had to do it all over again. And so the Bible says that the day after day, the priests were involved with this and it was just part of their culture and they understood it. And it was, it was like at the temple, it was, it was like this, always this heaviness that was around it because it was filled with all these sins and, and, and the people understood all of it and sacrificing, especially these lambs were just ingrained in the hearts and the minds of these Jewish worshipers. And, and the only way for them to be free from that punishment was this daily event that was taking place at the temple of the sacrifices. And it was temporary because the next time they failed, I mean, they could, they could you know, in one day have it forgiven. And the next day they're back because of our hearts and their hearts were in just this place of not being able to measure up. It was a burden for them. Imagine that for years and that be the culture. Children raised under that and then they raised their children and generation after generation. And that was what the culture was all about. Now imagine this, we, we're going to fast forward all the way up to the, the day of Jesus Christ. And one of the most dramatic events in all of scripture is when Jesus begins to be revealed to the world as a perfect sacrifice. And there's this man named John the Baptist, the forerunner of Christ. And he says this, and can you only imagine? He said on the next day, it says, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And that culture heard Lamb of God. They knew what that meant. They knew that the Lamb was the perfect sacrifice and their awaited Savior was now walking in front of them and the Savior was there, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. The long-awaited and most anticipated Savior was there. And all who would believe in Jesus as the Lamb of God are saved from the punishment of that sin. And just like that father who would place his hands on a sheep or a lamb and transfer, when we say we believe in Jesus, we're saying we believe that he is the Lamb of God and, and we are transferring that sin upon him. The Bible says in Hebrews 9, 28, it says Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many. Why not all? Because not all believe. Christ was sacrificed Think about this. Jesus is the Lamb of God. And he fulfilled the Old Testament. He fulfilled the law and the requirement of the law. And the, the system of, 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 of obedience and, and, and failures and sins. And he fulfilled that, that final sacrifice and it fulfilled it. And then he invites us to transfer our sin upon him. Listen, we don't deserve it. We don't deserve to get that sin off of us. By no means do we deserve it, but it's by his grace and his mercy and his love. He says, put it on me and I'll carry it to the cross for you. And you're free. Amen. So when, when you make a decision to follow Jesus Christ, Jesus, in humble submission to the Father, is before you. And we place our hands on the head of Christ. And we say, would you take my sin? I, I, I give my sin to you. I don't deserve this, I know, but... I can't do anything. I can't be good enough. Would you take all of my failures, God, and put them on Jesus? Every addiction I've had, I transfer to Jesus. The abortion, I transfer to Jesus. The, every lie, every dishonest decision, all of my sins are upon Jesus. And, and we lay them on Jesus. 
And then we turn and we get to walk away from it. And he turns and walks to the cross with it. And he carries that beam. And he takes it to the cross and he dies as the final sacrifice for your sins and my sins. It's so beautiful because he is the perfect lamb of God that takes away our sins. Amen, church. With that sin, he takes with it our shame. He takes with it our guilt. He takes with it all our condemnation. That's why when the Bible says, church, that if the Son set you free, then you are truly free indeed. Yes. Amen. You're free. You're free from that. Yes. You're free from that. You don't carry that any longer. Too many people are still saved, but carrying the weight of what they've done. And we want to be free. He wants you free. I, I was thinking about this freedom and, and what we need in life. And, you know, there are four basic physical needs of humanity. There's our need for food, our need for water, our need for air, and our need for shelter. Those are basic needs. We need that to survive. Humanity needs something else too, though. And I think all of humanity inside, beyond those four basic needs in life, we, we need to be loved, either by a parent or a friend or something. There's just something. In, God created us to, to want to be loved, to need love. God created us that way. He also created us to, to have a desire for forgiveness because he knows we're all gonna fail and miss it at times. And, and how do we get, I mean, we wanna get on with our life. There's some way we gotta get rid of these things so that we can get to live in a life and move forward in life. And, and that's just innate inside of us to want those things. And, and all of us have a sense of we want to be accepted. We, we want people just to, to accept us, just like, hey, I just, somebody just want me. Like that's just, those are basic needs inside of us significance is the last. I'll, I'll tell you, I mean, everybody needs to know that your life matters for something. And so the problem is, is we, we begin to try to seek these from the wrong place. I know that love in so many ways, we, 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 we want a parent to, to love us right, but listen, parents are not perfect. And so what happens when a parent misses it, a child feels the, the pain and the brunt of that. Or, or we want a friend to love us perfectly well, but friends aren't perfect, so they mess up and, and they don't love us perfectly well. And then we feel the wound of that. And, and sometimes we want our spouse to love us, but as much as I think my wife is amazing, she's not perfect, I'm not perfect. And we, we fail at those moments of perfect love. We can't love each other perfectly. When it comes to forgiveness, you know, there are things that I've done in my life and, and, and I would love for someone to, to say to me, it's okay, you know, just move on with it. And, and you know, and, and people seek for these things and, and it's right to want to, to move on. And, and, but I don't want to carry the, the emotional pain. I don't want to carry the shame of those things with it. We have a need for, for this connection and the problem is, is with the significance and all these things, and we, we start trying to get people to meet those needs in our life. And, and we think, you know, well, if I can just get them to love me, then, then, then I'm going to feel better. And we find ourselves trapped in this worldly system of needing people to satisfy these basic needs in our life. And the problem we have is that when I seek someone else to meet these basic needs in my life, the problem is, is that person is also seeking somebody to fill their basic needs in life. And so when I depend on this person and they they're broken trying to figure it out and they are broken and they're trying to figure it out for me. We become a big mess together because we keep failing each other. And when I get hurt, then I hurt others. And it becomes this messy system that we live in where I am hurting, so I hurt this person, but I need you to, to love me and to help me and accept me and forgive me. 
but this person's broken. So they're like, no, I'm going to look to this person. And this person's broken and hurting. And they're like, no, I can't help you. And this awful system happens. And what I want to say is somebody has to receive it from Jesus Christ so they can be fulfilled in him so they can stop the cycle and turn love back around and people can start getting healed again. Through Jesus, we're cycle breakers. I'm not perfect. And so I know there's still moments that I'm grappling with, but I want to get to the point to where I find my love in Him, I find my forgiveness in Him. I want to get to the point where I find my acceptance in him. I want to get to the point where I find my significance and my purpose in him so that if someone else messes up in my life, I don't have to hurt them back. I can stand and go because he loves me, he cares for me. I can just stand here and go, I forgive you. I want to walk in that kind of love. I want to walk in that kind of forgiveness. I want to be that kind of friend to somebody else. Because I know there's going to be days that all of us have someone that betrays them. And when that betrayal comes, I don't want to be ready to fight. I want to be ready to say, I forgive you. When someone offends me, someone says something, someone does something, I don't want to be that person that's jumping up going, ah! Especially to my spouse. I want to say, it's okay. I can take it because I know that Jesus loves me so much that he gave his life for me. And he said, transfer all your sin upon me. That's how much he loves me. So if he loves me that much, I don't have to be loved by everybody. Listen, I want you all to like me. I want you to love me. I really do. And I don't want you to offend me. I don't want to have to put that into practice, none of it. All right, I don't want to try it. I don't want to have to. It's going to happen, and I'm going to do it to some of you. And so you're going to have to practice as well. That's how you have a great community, you know. That's how you have a great marriage. But I want to be able to so purely have received from him the love that I need, the forgiveness from him, my acceptance from God. Listen, he accepts you so much that Jesus said, follow me. Like, he's like, come. And then he gave you a church family to belong to. Like, you belong here. Like, you know, you're in church today, and it's beautiful, and I'm I'm so glad you're here. Y'all are beautiful people. Um, And you're here to worship God and all that. You know, it's all important, and the word's important. But also, like, you're a community like we're we're like this accepting loving family that's messy and broken and 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 we're grace filled and we're like ah oh, I get it I'm here to help you I'm here to pray for you I'm here to forgive you I'm here to walk with you and and that become that's what a church is right that's what a church is like so my buddy Streeter right here front you always sit right here I love that thank you you're a good amen corner I love it but you're brothers with somebody back in that back corner over there. You know, and so we're all like, I want you to catch the, the bigger picture of what you're here for. And we're here for family to worship him and grow together and let the security of who we are in God give us the grace to be a big family. Amen, Amen church. People without Jesus people who do not recognize and know Jesus as the Lamb of God. These people are trapped in their sin and, and, and they're eternally separated from God. And without Jesus, people have to pay for their sin. Instead of giving it to Jesus, they're like, I'll, I'll pay it, which is more than they know they can handle. Without Jesus, people live with, with guilt of their past. Without Jesus, people are victims to their past, victims of their mistakes. Without Jesus, people live with shame and failures, shame, and, and, and they, they, they feel the, the weight of it in themselves. People without Jesus, they seek love and forgiveness and acceptance and significance through other broken people, and it never works. It never works. 
if you try to find it anywhere else, if you try to cover your pain and your emotions with anything other than Jesus, it's going to fail you and you're gonna be miserable. You're gonna live a life without hope. But the reason, church, we celebrate Easter is because Jesus is the Lamb of God that takes away our sins. And when you place your faith in Him, you are free indeed. Amen. Amen. Easter is so great. The, we, the reason I worship Jesus is he took away my sins. The reason I worship him is I don't live with shame. I want to give my life back to him. As a result of his grace, I want to live for him. I want to follow him. I want to be passionate about my, my life in him. I don't want to live a life of, 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 of sin any longer. I understand the weight of it now. I wanna live a life that pleases God and, I, and I, I just live for him. Not because I have to, but because of what he's already done in my life. And my life becomes a place of passionate worship back to him because he's been so good to me. Jesus gave his life. Church, that just, I'm, I'm, I'm undone by how good grace is and that <laughs> that the precious blood of Jesus was shed for this old boy from the mountains that didn't deserve it it was shed for my buddy Fidel Lachlan, all of us. That's why we celebrate Easter, because he did it for us. I want to just remind you of our Good Friday service, by the way, because this part of my message has been about what Christ did for us. And Holy Week begins on next Sunday, Palm Sunday, but Friday is the day that Chronologically, the Bible teaches us on Friday that Christ died on the cross for our sins. The Bible teaches us in, in our time, understanding time, is that it would have been like 9 a.m. that he began to hang on the cross. And he was there for six hours. And at 3 p.m., Christ on the cross said, it is finished. And he gave up his life. And when he said it is finished... He meant he's finished paying for our sins and it's been done. And so when you come to that Good Friday service, it's going to be a little different. Because on Sundays, listen, I like a celebration and I like it to, we celebrate the, the grace of, of the Lord. When you come to this, though, it's going to be a little different tone. We're, we're just going to have acoustic worship. It's going to be more solemn in that. It's going to be worshipful. We're going to, take communion together and remember Christ. We have some scripture readings in it. And then we're just gonna kind of close it. And you're gonna walk out of here feeling the, the, the weight of that cross. And, and there's gonna be an anticipation. You, I can't wait to get to Sunday to get this, to get this victory, <laughs> to get the, the heaviness of, of the cross off of me. Which brings me to the second part of what Easter's all about. Because three days later, the Bible teaches that Christ rose from the grave out of that tomb. And the reason that's so significant is that it proves that Jesus truly was the Son of God. And only a God, our God, could be perfect and sinless without blemish, without sin, and be the perfect Lamb of God. And so if he didn't come out of that grave, then he was just another man. And we're still trapped in darkness. And we're still trapped in our sin because it didn't work. But it did work. And it's true that Jesus is the Son of God that came out of that grave and gave victory over sin and death 
to all who will believe in him. And that's why we celebrate Easter. Three things I want to remind you about Easter, why we celebrate Easter. Uh, Number one, Easter is that pivotal event that stands as the bedrock of our faith. Number two, Easter is our reflection upon Jesus' death. That's Friday service. And then our celebration of his resurrection back to life is, is that Easter Sunday. And Easter then is a special time to share Jesus with others because it's, it's the pivotal moment that we understand who Christ is. And people are going to come into this atmosphere of worship and celebration and, and then God will move on their hearts and people will give their life to Christ. And so do whatever it takes to get people in, into the church that day. Now today, some of you are here and you've heard this message and you've never, you've never transferred your sin to Jesus. You didn't even know it's possible. And you have been carrying your sin. You may not even realize what you're carrying, but you're carrying it on you. And some people are walking around with guilt and shame and, and pains of their past. And, and I want you to know that Jesus wants you free today. And if you've never made a decision to follow Jesus Christ, then today is your day to receive him, to receive his forgiveness and to transfer your sin to him and walk away understanding the weight of it, but also understanding the freedom that comes. Some of you are here today and you have been following Jesus, but you haven't laid down that shame. And today I'm gonna offer you that moment. Really special moment in church here. Would you bow your heads? If you're here today and you've never said yes to Jesus, I want my sins forgiven. If you've never accepted the invitation to follow him, now is the moment. Every head is bowed. And if that's you and you want to choose Jesus, would you lift your hand to me in the air real high? I'd love to see your hand. God bless you. Is there anyone else? I, want to, I don't want to miss anybody. God bless you. One more sec. Anybody else? Let's all say this prayer together out loud. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus, the Lamb of God, who died on the cross for my sins. In this moment, I give him my sin and I turn and walk away to follow Jesus with all my heart, all the days of my life. I lay down shame. I lay down the pains, the guilt, and the condemnation of everything I've ever done. And today I declare that through Jesus Christ, I am free in Jesus' name. Amen, church. Amen, church. So good, so good. He is so good. Would you stand up with me as we close today? I love the final part of our church service where we we take this moment to pray for people's needs. We worship. He's worthy of our worship. If ever there's a day we're going to worship, right now is it. I I mean, like we just heard about the Lamb of God and how beautiful. He gave us what we couldn't have given ourselves and no one could do for us. So we take a moment and worship. We have communion that's at each end of the building and What a moment to remember his body and his blood that was shed so that I can have life, you can have life. You can, if you're a guest, you're welcome to go to these tables and get a little cup and there's bread and juice and just remember Christ. As our prayer team comes, two things. If you raised your hand to say, yes, I believe in Jesus for the first time, I would love for you to come to one of our prayer leaders and say, that was me, I prayed prayed that prayer. Just let us know, we just wanna, be able to stand with you and pray with you and just just welcome you but also the bible teaches us that on the cross jesus took all of our all of our sicknesses and diseases the bible says that by jesus's stripes we are made well and healed there's a miracle at the cross for our physical bodies as well his body was broken so our body can be healed and so if you need a miracle in your life this is a miracle praying group right here they're not praying for God to maybe (laughs) they're praying God come God move so if you need a God move in your life 
Come to one of these people and let them pray with you. But let's worship, let's take communion, and let's take these final moments just to reflect and give God all the praise. Amen. just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus
I want to invite you back next week for Palm Sunday. It's going to be a great day. If you're a guest, we have a guest center right out front, right outside there. Love for you to drop by there, pick up a, a gift that we have for you. We'd just love to meet you. Church, thanks for coming. I hope you have a great Sunday afternoon, and we'll see you next week.